Let us now get some practice in writing Excel formulas, which is translating our understanding of a computation into an Excel formula. Consider this. Write a formula to find three times the average of the highlighted range. Okay, so we're not just saying find the average, but I'm saying find three times the average. So once again, write your formula. I mean, even if you think you have no way of writing this, just stretch a little bit. Try to write some solution, commit to something. Even if it's grossly wrong, it doesn't matter. Your act of committing actually helps you in the process of learning. So commit to some solution and then pause the video and then take a look at it. Okay, so of course we want three times the average. So one part of it is going to be average C2 colon F2. And if you want three times, just multiply it by three. That's it. So just say equals three times the average of C2 colon F2. Right? So even though I have not taught you how to do this, you should be able to make these kinds of inferences and take a shot at it. Right? So the important thing is don't be afraid to experiment. Just because you have not been taught something, don't be afraid to experiment and see how it works. Right? Because all of these things can do you know, programs like Excel and so on can do so many things that it's impossible for a course or an instructor to tell you everything. You're going to have to experiment and find out certain things, right? And of course, when you want to do something and either you've forgotten how to do it or it has not been taught in class, you shouldn't just give up and wait for the instructor to tell you. You can experiment and of course, you can also do a Google search you will be surprised how often you will find the right answer within a few minutes if you just do a search on Google. Okay, so don't, you know, don't be afraid to experiment and to search and take the initiative to find things on your own. You know, there's so much of a satisfaction in solving a problem on your own rather than simply being told by someone how to do it. Okay, so never fail to experiment. Okay. So the important point that this illustrates is that when you're using a function, it doesn't mean that the function has to be the only thing in the formula. A function can be a part of a larger expression in a formula. In fact, a function can be an argument inside of another function, right? Because after all, when you look at this function, average C2 colon F2, when you look at that function call, think of the result as just one number, okay? So wherever you can put a number, you can put this whole thing there as well. Three times uh, average C2 colon F2 or average C2 colon F2 is just a number. So wherever it makes sense for you to have a number, you can have that expression as well. Okay. So that's important to understand. So this is how you build complex formulas in Excel. Okay. So write a formula in F4 to find the product of the average of the numbers in the highlighted range and the maximum in that range. Right? In other words, what it's telling you is find the average of the numbers, find the maximum of the numbers, multiply these two. Okay? So it's the average of the, uh, it's the product of the average and the maximum. So once again, pause the video, commit to a solution based on what you've already learned and then continue the video and see if your solution was correct. Okay, so once again you can stitch together a solution using the two function calls equals average of C2 colon F2, that's the first part, average of the numbers in the highlighted range, maximum in the range is max C2 colon F2 and then it says find the product of them, well multiply them with a star. Okay. So you can see that functions are nothing magical. The result of a function is either a number or it's something else. In the context in which we have looked at it so far, the result of a function call is a number. And you can treat, you know, treat it just as a number and put it inside all kinds of arithmetic expressions. That's all you're doing, right? So you're saying equals average C2 colon F2. It is some number. You're multiplying it with maximum C2 colon F2 is some other number. So this is just like saying equals, you know, one number multiplied by another number. That's all. It just so happens that 
you're expressing this as a result of a function and you're expressing this as a result of another function. Let's take a few examples of how to write arithmetic expressions in Excel. Okay, so suppose A2 contains the price of an item and B2 contains the number of units of that item that somebody purchased, the quantity that they purchased. Right? In other words, the item is uh, the price of the item is $20.5 and somebody bought 5 units of that item. Right? So what formula can you write in C2 to calculate the total bill? Okay, so again pause the video and write what formula you think you will write in C2 to compute the total bill, the total amount of money that the person is supposed to pay. Okay, so one way to write this is to say equals A2 star B2. Consider this problem. So you've got cell A1, it has the price of a gallon of gas. A2 contains the number of miles per gallon for a car, that's the mileage for a particular car. And A3 contains the number of miles that someone drove that particular car on a trip. So now in formula A4, in cell A4, we want to write a formula to compute the total gas cost for the trip. Okay, so consider this and think about what formula you would write in cell A4. Pause the video, commit to an answer, and then come back and continue the video. Okay, so I assume you have committed to an answer. Clearly, what we need to do here is first find how many gallons are going to get consumed, then multiply that by the price per gallon. And how many gallons are going to be consumed, we can just find by dividing the distance by the number of miles per gallon. Okay, so one way to write this answer would be equals A3 divided by A2 multiplied by A1. Because A3 is the number of miles, A2 is the number of miles per gallon. So A3 divided by A2 gives us the total number of gallons multiplied by the price per gallon. Okay, now I have added parentheses here just for clarity. It's not strictly necessary here. Now remember that in Excel parentheses are used in two different contexts. One is as we have seen earlier in the context of functions, right? You have the function name and then within the parentheses you supply all the arguments to the function. Here we are using parentheses strictly in the same sense in which we use parentheses in arithmetic, just as a way of affecting the order in which operations are performed. Okay, Here actually strictly speaking I really did not need to put parentheses at all, but I just want to clarify the fact that we are first computing the number of gallons and then multiplying it by the price per gallon. Okay, So if we had just written A3 divided by A2 without any parentheses star A1 that would have been fine. We would have got the same results. Okay, but now let's look at the issue of where operator precedence starts playing a role in Excel. Consider this. A department gives a laptop and a tablet computer to every employee. Okay, so C3, cell C3 contains the number of employees in the department which is uh, 39 employees. C1 has the price of a laptop and C2 has the price of a tablet. Right. So now what we want to do is in cell C4 we want to put a formula that computes the total cost for the department. Okay. Remember every employee gets a laptop and a tablet and there are 39 employees. What's the total cost? Of course we don't want to pose this as an arithmetic problem. All of you can solve that problem but we want to translate that into an Excel formula. Okay, So once again, pause the video, write your answer, then continue the video. Okay, Suppose you wrote this formula equals C1 plus C2 times C3. Is this formula correct? Okay, now Of course, I'm not saying that this is the correct formula just asking a question, is this formula correct? Commit to an answer once again, yes or no, and then proceed. Okay, so it looks like it's adding C1 and C2. 
which is the price of a laptop plus the price of a tablet, which is the price per employee, and multiplying it by the number of employees. Right? So it looks correct. Uh, but of course, from your understanding of the rules of basic arithmetic, you know that this is not correct. Right? That is because in arithmetic, we have the notion of operator precedence. Right? Even though you've got the plus coming before the multiplication, multiplication has a higher precedence in the sense that it is performed in the absence of any parentheses, multiplication would be performed first. So what would really happen here is 300 multiplied by 39, which is the price of all the tablets for all the employees. And after that, you would just add C1. right? So you would get the price of all the tablets plus the price of just one laptop. So this would not be correct. Okay, And the answer is going to be this, which is not correct. Because we know the answer is 900 times 39, which is almost 1,000 times 40. It should be close to 40,000. Less than 40,000, but close to, but it's nowhere near that. So clearly, we know this answer is wrong. And it's wrong because we understand that multiplication is performed first. Whereas, what we really want is that we first want to add 600 and 300, get 900, and then multiply it by 39. Or no matter what, we want 39 to be multiplied by the total price of laptop and tablet. Okay, And this is not doing that. This is only multiplying the price of a tablet by 39. Okay, So this is what we have uh, in terms of operator precedence. We have to take account of operator precedence. In the absence of parentheses, multiplication and division take precedence over addition and subtraction and hence would be done first. Okay, So again, as I already explained, Excel will first multiply C2 by C3 and then add C1. So clearly, we somehow need to affect this precedence. And you know from your understanding of basic arithmetic that we can affect the precedence by putting parentheses. And this is how you would write the formula. You would say, okay, first add C1 and C2. Now we've got parentheses, so we are forcing it to do that first and then multiply it by C3. Okay, And the result would be this. So operator precedence is very, very important in Excel. And when you're writing formulas, you have to take account of that. So when present, parentheses take precedence and are performed first. Thus, in this case, our addition takes place first and only then the multiplication takes place and therefore we get the correct results. Here's a partial list of operator precedence. Okay, so the highest priority is given to parentheses. So in any expression, when parentheses occur first, that is computed first. And then that is followed by the colon operator, which is to compute ranges and then followed by the unary minus operator, like when you say minus A5, right? So that's not a binary operator in the sense that two things are not involved for the operator. It's just one, A5, and you're just taking the minus of that, right? And then the exponentiation operator, which is raising something to some power, and then multiplication division followed by addition subtraction and followed by equals and, and other things. We'll look at some of these as we continue the course later on. So as of now, we only discussed the operator precedence between parentheses, division and, sub and multiplication, and addition and subtraction. Let's take a look at some examples of operator precedence. Okay? Suppose you see an expression 2 plus 3 times 5. Right? We already know from our prior discussions that multiplication has a higher precedence, so the result is going to be 3 times 5, 15 plus 2, 17. 2 plus 3 within parentheses times 5. Now, by adding parentheses, we have changed the operator precedence. 2 plus 3 will be done first. So it's 5 times 5 is 25. Minus 5 plus 5. Okay. So here, it's not 5 plus 5, 10, and then the minus applied. So the result is not minus 10. The result is because we've got minus has a higher precedence. This is the unary minus, minus applied to just 5. So the unary minus has a higher preference than plus, as seen from our previous slide. right? So see, the unary minus has a higher precedence than plus. So therefore, 
we see that this is really minus 5 plus 5 and the result is 0. Let's take another example. Of course, you put the 5 plus 5 within parentheses. Now you're saying explicitly compute 5 plus 5 first and then apply the unary minus. So the result is going to be minus 10. Another example, 2 star 3 raised to the power 2. Right. So there are two possible interpretations here. One is first multiply 2 by 3 and then raise the result to the power 2, which means 2 times 3 is 6 raised to the power 2, 36. Or it is 2 multiplied by 3 raised to the power 2, which is 9. 3 raised to the power 2 is 9, 3 squared. Multiply that by 2, the answer is 18. Okay. So once again, the correct answer hinges on whether the star has a higher precedence or the exponentiation operator, which is this raising to the power, the hat, whether that has the higher precedence. It turns out from our previous table that the hat has a higher precedence and therefore this is going to be performed first and the result is going to be 18. So again, if you want to change that, you can put 2 times 3 within parentheses. So that's going to be performed first, 6 raised to the power 2, 36. Again, 2 plus 3 divided by 5. Again, is it 5 divided by 5 is the answer 1 or is it 2 plus 3 divided by 5 which is 2.6. And of course, we know that the division has a higher priority over plus and therefore the answer is 2.6. Finally, you want to change that. You want to say, okay, I want to perform 2 plus 3 first and then divide it by 5. Well, put parentheses around 2 plus 3 and of course, you get 1. So these are all just illustrations of how operator precedence works. Of course, there's nothing new here. This is exactly how operator precedence works in regular arithmetic. And Excel simply works like regular arithmetic. So really nothing new, but I just wanted to refresh your thinking.